much for being here tonight to support us. This is amazing. Uh, I had had about half the chairs put out. And then I had some very wise people insist that I put more chairs out, and they were right. So that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Uh, tonight's production is Arsenic and Old Lace, uh, the classic play of murder and mayhem that I think you will all enjoy. Uh, your students who have been participating in this play have blown me away <laughs> with their determination to pull this thing off. And we haven't had a traditional rehearsal process um, because we're still a growing drama program and department um, and we, you know, we were meeting in an after school club format. So we didn't have the traditional rehearsal process. So I think that you will be quite impressed with what these students have pulled off even in a truncated rehearsal. They're pretty amazing. So I just want to welcome you all and invite you to sit back and enjoy the show. Yes, indeed. My sister Martha and I have been talking all week about your sermon last Sunday. It really is wonderful, Dr. Harper. In only two short years, you've taken on the spirit of Brooklyn. That's very gratifying, Miss Brewster. You see, living here next to the church all our lives, we've seen so many ministers come and go. As we always say, the spirit of Brooklyn is friendliness, and your sermons are not so much sermons as friendly talks. Personally, I've always enjoyed my talk with Cardinal Gibbons, or have I met him yet? No, dear, not yet. Bully. Will you have another cup of tea, Dr. Harper? Oh no, I'm afraid I have no appetite for dinner now. I always eat way too many of those biscuits just to taste that lovely jam. You haven't enjoyed the quince. We always put a little apple in with it to take the tartness out. No, thank you. We'll send you over a jar. No, no, you keep it here so I can be sure of having your biscuits with it. I do hope they don't make us use that imitation flour again. I mean, with this war trouble and all. It may not seem very charitable of me, but I've almost come to the conclusion that this Mr. Hitler guy isn't a Christian. If only Europe were on another planet. Europe, sir? Yes, Teddy. Well, let's not talk about war. Will you have another cup of tea, Dr. Harper? No, thank you. I must admit, Miss Abby, that war and violence seem far removed from these surroundings. It is peaceful here, isn't it? Yes, peaceful. The, vi the virtues of another day, they're all here in this house. The gentle virtues that went out with the candlelight, ca good manners, and low taxes. It's just as it was when Grandfather Rooster built it and furnished it. It's one of the oldest houses in Brooklyn. <coughs> Except only the electricity is new. And we use that as little as possible. It was Mortimer who persuaded us to put it in. Yes, I can understand that. Your nephew Mortimer's, Mortimer seems only to live by electrical light. Poor boy has to work so late. I understand he's taking Elaine to the theater again with him tonight. Teddy, your, your brother Mortimer will be back a little bit later. Delighted. We're so, Elaine, we're so happy it's Elaine Mortimer takes to the theater with him. Well, it's a new experience for me to wait up until 3 o'clock in the morning for my daughter to be brought home. Oh, Dr. Harper, I hope you don't disapprove of Mortimer. Well, I mean, we would feel so guilty, Sister Martha and I, since he was here in this house that your daughter met Mortimer. Of course, Miss Abby, and so I'll say immediately that I believe Mortimer himself to be quite a worthy gentleman. But I must also say that I've watched the growing intimacy between him and my daughter with some trepidation. For one reason, Miss Abby, Oh, you mean his stomach, Dr. Harper? Stomach? His dyspepsia. He's bothered with it so, poor boy. No, Miss Abby, I'll be frank with you. I'm talking about your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theater. The theater? Why, Dr. Harper and Miss Mortimer writes for a New York newspaper. I know, Miss Abby, I know. But a dramatic critic is constantly exposed to the theater, and I don't doubt that some of them do develop an interest in it. 
Well, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Yes. Mortimer writes awful things about the theater, but you can't blame him. Poor boy, he was so happy writing for real estate, but you really knew something about, and then they just made him take this awful night position. My, my. Yes, bad as he says, the theater can't last much longer anyway. And for now, it's a living. Yes, I think if we give the theater another year or two, perhaps. No, thank you, Teddy. I'll go. Come here, Miss Brophy. Hello, Miss Brewster. How are you, Miss Fine? Very well, Miss Brewster. What news have you brought me, gentlemen? Colonel, we have nothing to report. Thank you, gentlemen. Splendid. At ease. You know Dr. Harper? Sure. Hello, Dr. Harper. We've come to get the toys for the Christmas. Oh, yeah. That's splendid work you do. Fixing up the discarded toys to give poor children a happier Christmas. It gives us something. Shout yourself in the foot. Teddy, you go get that big brown box from your Aunt Martha's room. How is Miss, Mr. Brophy? Mr. Brophy has been quite ill, Dr. Harper. Pneumonia. I'm sorry to hear that. Tar! Oh, he's fine. A little weak still. I'll get you some beef broth to take him. Oh, don't bother Miss Abby. You've done so much for him already. It won't take a minute. We made it this morning. Sister Martha's bringing some to poor Mr. Benitsky. Well, sit down, be comfortable. She shouldn't go through all that trouble. Listen, try and stop her or her sister from doing something nice. And for nothing, they don't even care how you vote. When I received my call to Brooklyn and moved next door, my husband wasn't well. When he died, and for months before. Well, if I know what pure kindness and absolute generosity are, it's because I've known the Brewster sisters. Colonel, you promised not to do that. But I have to call a cabinet meeting to get the release of those supplies. He used to do that in the middle of the night. The neighbors Ray's came with us. They're a little afraid of her anyway. Oh, she's quite harmless. Suppose she does think she said to Roosevelt. There's a lot worse people she could think she was. Well, her father, the old girl's brother, was some sort of genius, wasn't he? And their father, Teddy's grandfather, seems to me I've heard he was a little crazy too. Yeah, crazy like a fox. He made over a million dollars. Really? Here in Brooklyn? Yeah, patent medicine. He was kind of a quack of some sort. Old Sergeant Edwards remembers him. He used the house here as a clinic of some sort. Tried him out on people. Yeah, he used to make mistakes occasionally too. The department never bothered him much because he was pretty useful in autopsies, especially poison cases. Well, whatever he did left his daughters fixed for life. Thank God for that. Not that they ever spend any of it on themselves. Yes, I'm well acquainted with their charities. You don't know a tenth of it. When I was with the Missing Persons Bureau, I was trying to trace an old man that we never did find. Do you know there's a renting agency that's got this house down on some of the furnished rooms? They don't rent rooms. You can bet that anybody who comes here looking for a room goes away with a good meal and probably a few dollars in their kit. It's just their way of digging up some people to do some good to. Oh, well now, isn't this nice? How do you do, Miss Brewster? How do you do, Miss Brophy, Dr. Harper, Miss Klein? How are you, Miss Brewster? We dropped in to get the Christmas toys. Oh yes, Teddy's Army and Navy. They were out. They're all packed. The Colonel's upstairs after them. It seems the cabinet has to okay it. Oh yes, of course. I hope Mr. Brophy's doing better. He's doing fine, ma'am. Your sister's getting some beef broth for me to take to him. Oh yes, we made some this morning. I just took some to a poor man who broke ever so many bones. Oh, you're back, Martha. How is Mr. Benitsky? Well, I'm afraid it's serious, Dan. The doctor was there. He said he's going to amputate in the morning. Can we be present? No, I asked him, but he says it's against the rules of the hospital. You couldn't be of any service, and you must spare yourself something. Well, here's the beef broth, Miss Brophy. Make sure it's good and hot. Yes, ma'am. What's this, the organ? Teddy, here, put that back. But the organ goes to Australia. Now, Teddy. What does it matter what kid gets it? Bobby Evans, Rizzy Cohen. We'll run along, ma'am. Thank you very much. Not at all. Goodbye. I should be getting home. Well, before you go, Dr. Harper. Charge! Charge the blockhouse! The blockhouse? The stairs are always sand far on a hill. Have you ever tried to persuade her she wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. He's so, she's so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. One time, long ago, remember, Martha? We thought if she'd be George Washington, it might be a change for her, but... 
She stayed under her bed for days and just wouldn't be anyone. And we'd so much rather her be Teddy Roosevelt <gasps> than nobody. Well, if she's happy, and what's more important, if you're happy, you'll see that she signed these. Uh, what are they? Dr. Harper's made all the arrangements for Teddy to go to Happy Dale Sanitarium after we pass on. But why should Teddy sign any papers now? It's better to have it all settled if the Lord should take you away, son. Perhaps we couldn't persuade Teddy to commit himself, and that would mean an unpleasant legal procedure. Mrs. Witherspoon understands these are to be filed away until the time comes to use them. <sighs> Miss Witherspoon? Who's she? She's the superintendent of Happy Dale. Dr. Harper has arranged for Miss Witherspoon to drop in the next day or two to meet Teddy. I should be running along, or Elaine will be looking for me. Well, Dr. Harper, you give our love to Elaine. And please don't think harshly of Mortimer because he's dramatic critic. Somebody has to do those things. Did you just have tea? Wasn't it rather late? Yes, dear, and dinner's going to be late too. So, why? Teddy, you're going to Panama to dig another log for the canal. Delighted. That's bully. Just bully. I shall repair at once for the journey. Tor! <laughs> Abby, well, I was out. Oh, yes, dear. I just couldn't wait for you, and Dr. Hyper was coming. But all by yourself? Oh, I got along fine. I'll run downstairs and see. No, dear. There wasn't any time, and I was all alone. <sighs> Martha, just look at the window seat. Oh, dear. It's Elaine. Come in, dear. Good afternoon, Miss Abby. Good afternoon, Miss Martha. I thought, I thought Mother was here. Oh, she just this minute left. Did you meet her? No, I took the shortcut through the cemetery. Mortimer hasn't come yet? No, dear, not yet. Oh, he asked me to meet him here. Do you mind if I wait? Not at all. Please sit down. But we really must speak to Mortimer about doing this to you. Doing what? Well, you see, he was brought up no better. When a young gentleman is taking a young lady out, he should call for her at her house. Oh, there's something about calling for a girl at a parsonage that discourages any man who doesn't embroider. Oh, he's done this too often. We'll speak to him. Oh, please don't. After a young man whose idea of a nightlife is to take me to a prayer meeting, it's wonderful to go the, to the theater almost every night of my life. Oh, it's comforting for us too. Seeing that Mortimer has to see some of those plays that he has to see, at least he's sitting next to a minister's daughter. Oh, Lane, what must you think of us? Not having tea cleared away by this. Oh, don't bother. Until Mortimer comes, and then I'll help you. Mortimer should be here any minute now. Yes, Mother must have been surprised not to find me at home. I'd better run over and say goodnight to her. If Mortimer comes, it's home, I'll be right back. Oh, hello, Wart. Hello, Lane. Hello, Aunt Martha. Abby, Mortimer's here. Where are you going, Summer? I was just going over to tell Mother not to wait up for me. I didn't know that was still being done even in Brooklyn. Hello, Mortimer. Hello, Aunt Abby. How are you, dear? All right, and you look well. You haven't changed much since yesterday. Oh, it was yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> We're seeing a great deal of you lately. Well, sit down, sit down. Uh, <clears throat> Abby? <sighs> haven't we have something to do in the kitchen? Hmm? Huh? Yeah. You know. The tea things? Oh, yes, the tea things. Well, you two just make yourselves at home. Just make yourselves at home. Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't care. I'm not very hungry. Well, I just had breakfast. Suppose we wait until after the show. But that'll make it pretty late, won't it? Not with the little stinker we're seeing tonight. From what I've heard about it, we'll be at Blake's by 10 o'clock. You ought to be fair to these plays. Are these plays fair to me? Well, I've never seen you walk out on a musical. That musical's an opening tonight. No? <clears throat> darling, you'll have, darling, you'll have to learn the rules with a musical. There are always four changes of title, three postponements. They like the New Haven, but it needs a lot of work. Oh, I was hoping it was a musical. Well, I'd better run over and tell Mother not to wait up for me. I've never been able to rationalize it. What? My falling in love with a girl who lives in Brooklyn. Falling in love? You're not stooping to the articulate, are you? Where could we be married in a hurry? Say tonight. I'm, I'm sure Mother will insist on officiating. Oh gosh, I'll bet your mother could even make the marriage service sound pedestrian. Are you by any chance writing a review of it? Forgive me, darling, it's an occupational disease. <clears throat> oh, I may give that play tonight a good notice. Oh, darling, don't pretend you love me that much. 
All right, everything formal and legal, but not later than next month. Oh, darling, I'll talk it over with Mother and set the date. No, I'll have to see what's in rehearsal. There will be, there will be a lot of other first nights in, nights in October. Hello, Mortimer. Hello, Mr. President. What news have you brought me? Just this, Mr. President. The country is squarely behind you. Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Where are you off to, Teddy? Panama. Panama's the cellar. He digs locks for the canal down there. You're so sweet with her, and she's very fond of you. Well, Teddy was always my favorite sister. Favorite? Were there more of you? There's another sister, Josephine. I've never heard of her. Her aunts never mention her. No, we don't like to talk about Josephine. She left Brooklyn very early by request. Josephine was the kind of girl who liked to cut worms in two with her teeth. What became of her? I don't know. She wanted to become a surgeon like grandfather, but she wouldn't go to medical school first, and her first practice got her into trouble. Are you two going to be late for the theater? Oh, we're skipping dinner. We won't have to start for half an hour. Oh, well, then I'll leave you two alone together again. Oh, don't bother, darling. I'm going over to speak to Mother. Before I go out with you, she likes to pray over me a bit. I'll be right back. I'll cut to the cemetery. Mortimer, we always knew Elaine would be a good influence for you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to marry her. What? Oh, darling! Martha, Martha, come in here! I've got the most wonderful news for you. Mortimer and Elaine are going to be married. Married? Oh, Mortimer! We always wish it would happen just like this. Well, Elaine must be the happiest girl in the world. Happy? Just look at her leaping over those gravestones. Say, what's that? What's what, dear? See that statue there? That's a horn dinner to Carnina. Uh, oh no, that's Emma B. Stout. Ascending to heaven. No, no, standing on Mrs. Stout's left ear. That bird, that's a red-crested swallow. I've only seen one of those before in my life. Well, I don't know how you can be thinking about birds now. What with the engagement and everything? It's a vanishing species. Thoreau was very fond of them. <clears throat> so, um, by the way, I left a large envelope <coughs> around here last week. It was one of the chapters on my book of Thoreau. Well, if you left it here, it must be here somewhere. Well, Mortimer, what are your plans? When are you going to marry Elaine? There must be something more you can tell us about her. Elaine, oh yes, Elaine thought it was brilliant. What was, dear? My chapter on Thoreau. Well, when Elaine gets back, I think we ought to have a little celebration. We must drink to your happiness. Martha, do you have any more of that little bar Baltimore drink glass? Oh, yes. No. And I'll open a bottle of wine. Oh, and to think it happened in this room. Where can I put that? Well, with your fiancé sitting next to you tonight, I do hope the play can be something you can enjoy for once. It might be something romantic. What's the name of it? Murder Will Out. Oh, dear. When the curtain goes up, the first thing you see, the first thing you see will be a dead body. to go to the uh, sanitarium, Happy Dale. Yes, dear. It's all arranged. Dr. Harper's here with the papers for Teddy to sign. Here they are. He's got to sign them right away. That's what Dr. Harper thinks. Then there won't be any legal difficulties after we pass on. He's got to sign them this minute. He's down in the cellar. Get him up here right away. There's no such hurry as that. No. When Teddy's got a mind on the canal, you can't get a mind on anything else. Teddy has got to go to Happy Dale now, tonight. Well, Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? Why, for as long as we'll live, we'll never be separated from Teddy. Listen, darlings, I'm frightfully sorry, but I've got some shocking news for you. Now, we've all got to try and keep our heads. You know we've sort of humored Teddy because we thought he was harmless. Why, she is harmless. She was harmless. That's why she has to go to Happy Dale. Why? She has to be confined. Mortimer, how have you suddenly turned against Teddy, your own sister? <laughs> You've got to know sometime. It might as well be now. Teddy's killed a man. <laughs> There's a body in the window seat. Nonsense, dear. Yes, you know. You know. Of course, but that has nothing to do with Teddy. No. Now, Mormon, you just forget the whole thing. Forget you ever saw the gentleman. Forget. Well, we never dreamed you'd peek. But who is he? His name's Hoskins. Adam Hoskins. That's all you really know about him, except that he's a method. That's all you know about him. Well, what's he doing here? What happened to him? He died. Men, Martha, men don't just get into window seats and die. No, we know. 
He died first. Well, how? Well, he drank some wine with poison in it. How did the poison get in the wine? Well, we put it in the wine because it's less noticeable. The wine it's in the tea, it has a distinct odor. You put it in the wine? Yes, and I put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat because I knew that Dr. Harper was coming. So you knew what you'd done. You didn't want Dr. Harper to see the body. Well, not a tea. That wouldn't have been very nice. Now, Warmer, you just forget the whole thing. I do think Martha and I have the right to our own little secrets. And don't tell Elaine. Abby, I thought I was out. I was visiting Mrs. Schultz. She's feeling much better, but she would like us to take Jared to one of those movies again. Well, we must do that again today or tomorrow. <laughs> yes, of course, but this time we're going to go where we want to go. Mm -hmm. He's not going to drag me to one of those scary pictures again. See, so Dad, hello, Al. You know who this is? That's right. Say, Al, when I left the office, I told you where I was going, remember? Well, where did I say? Uh huh. Well, it'll take me about half an hour to get to Brooklyn. What time have you got? That's right. I must be here. Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha. Come in here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, what are we going to do about what? There's a body in there. Yes, we told you, Mr. Hoskins. Well, good heavens, I can't turn you over to the police, but what am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, stop being so excited. And for pity's sake, stop worrying. We told you to just forget the whole thing. Forget, my dear Aunt Abby, can't I make you realize that something has to be done? Well, Moira, you behave yourself. You are too old to be flying off the handle like this. But Mr. Hoskins. Hoskins, dear. Well, whatever his name is, you can't leave him in there. You don't intend to, dear. But Teddy's down in the cellar Dean log right now. You mean you're going to bury Mr. Hodgkiss in the cellar? Yes, yes. That's what we did with the others. No, you can't bury Mr. Others? The other gentleman. When you say others, do you mean others? More than one others? Well, yes, let's see. <laughs> this is 11, isn't it, Abby? No, dear. This is definitely 12. <laughs> No, because I remember when Mr. Hoskins first came in that he would make an even dozen. <sighs> Hello? Hello, Al. Hello? Al, my, it's good to hear your voice. Well, anyway, they're all down in the cellar, so. <sighs> oh, no, Al, I'm so as a lark. I just called because I was feeling a little pirandel up here, and he went, he went now. Oh look, I'm glad you called. Get a hold of George right away. He's got to he's got to review the play tonight. I can't make it. No, Al, you're wrong. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Well, George has has got to cover the play tonight. This is my department and I'm running it. You get a hold of George. Now let's see, where were we? Twelve? Yes. Abby ought to think we count the first one, and that makes twelve. Alright, now who's the first one? Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. But I still don't think we could claim full credit for him because, well, he just died. Martha means without any help from us. Well, <laughs> Mr. Midgley came here looking for a room and, well. Well, it was just after you moved to New York. And it seemed so wrong for such a lovely room to be going to waste, so. We felt so sorry for him. All his kids and kin were dead and left him so forlorn and unhappy. He was so lonely. <laughs> so when his heart attack came, and she and he sat dead in that chair, <laughs> looking so peaceful. Remember, Martha? We decided then and there that if we could help any other lonely old men to that same peace, we would. He dropped dead right in that chair. Oh, how awful for you. Well, it was rather like old times. You see, Grandfather always had a cadaver or two around the house. Well, Mortimer, now that you know the whole thing, you can just forget about it. And that's how all this started. That man walking in here and dropping dead. Well, of course, we realized we couldn't depend on that happening again, so. We made it our mission. Yes, yeah, so you remember all those, all those jars on 
grandfather's laboratory walls? Well, you know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. You mean enough for a paper lily? Well, again, I take a gallon of elderberry wine, a teaspoon of arsenic, a half a teaspoon of strychnine, and a pinch of cyanide. Shut up. Quite a kid. Yes. In fact, one of our gentlemen found the time to say, how delicious. Well, I really should get things started in the kitchen. I wish you could stay for dinner. I'm trying, out, I'm trying out a new recipe. Trust me, I can't eat a thing. <laughs> well, I'll come help you, dear. Well, I feel so much better now. Oh, you have to wait for Elaine, don't you? Well, I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. Oh, it's you. Don't be cross, darling. Mother could see that I was excited, so I told her about us, and that made it hard for me to get away. But listen, darling. Mother's not going to be waiting up for me tonight. You run along humbly and I'll call you up tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, yeah, you run along home. I mean, you know I always call you up every day or two. Well, I'm going to the theater tonight. No, we're not. Well, I've got to know what happened. Certainly you can tell me. Elaine, something's come up. What? <gasps> Mortimer, you've lost your job? No, I haven't lost my job. Well, I've got to know what happened. Certainly you can tell me. No, dear, I can't. Well, why not? <clears throat> if we're going to be married... Married? Have you forgotten that not 15 minutes ago you proposed to me? I did? Oh, yes. Well, as far as I know, that's still on. Now you're running along home, right? I'll, I'll, I've got to do something. Listen, you can't propose to me one minute, then throw me out of the house the next. I'm not throwing you out of the house, but dear, will you please get out of here? No, I won't get out of here! Not to... I've had some kind of explanation. Elaine! Hello? Oh, hello? Al? Hold on a minute, will you? All right, it's important, but it can wait a minute, can't it? Hold on. Look, Elaine, you're a sweet girl, and I love you, but I have something on my mind now, and I want you to go home and wait until I call you up. Now, don't try to be masterful. When we're married, and I have problems to face, I hope you're less tedious and uninspired. And when we're married, if we're married, I hope I find you more adequate! <laughs> Elaine, Elaine! Hello? Al? Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, Al? That's the doorbell, dear, not the telephone. <laughs> How do you do? Come in. I understand you have a room to rent. Yes, won't you step in? Are you the lady of the house? Yes, I'm Miss Brewster. And this is my sister, another Miss Brewster. My name is Gibbs. Oh, well, won't you step in? Sorry, we're just sitting at the table for dinner. Hello, let me talk to Al again. City desk, Al, city desk. What? Oh, I'm sorry, wrong number. May, may I see the room? Well, let's sit a minute and let's get acquainted. That, that one's you if I don't like the room. Is your home from Brooklyn? Don't got a home. Live in a hotel, don't like it. Hello, city desk. Are your family Brooklyn people? Haven't got a family. All alone in the world? Yep. Well, Martha. <laughs> you come to just the right house. Hello, Al Mort. We got cut off. Well, I can't cover the play tonight. That's all there is to it. I can't. Well, what church do you go to? There's an Episcopal church practically next door. I'm Presbyterian. Used to be. What's George doing in Bermuda? Certainly I told him he could go to Bermuda. It's my department, isn't it? Well, we've got to do, well, we've got to get somebody. Who else is there around the office? I'd really like to see the room. Well, let's just see if you like our wine or not. Never touch it. It's elderberry wine. Elderberry wine. Hmm. Haven't tasted elderberry wine since I was a boy. Thank you. Well, there must be some printers around Lookout. The fellow who sets my coffee, he ought to know what I write about. His name is Joe. He's the third machine from the left, the owl. He might turn out to be another Burns mantle. Do you have your own elderberry bushes? No, but the cemetery is full of them. No, I'm not drinking them. I'm going to start now. Mortimer! Ah. Mortimer, not ah. that. No, get out, just get out, come on, just, yeah, get out, get out. Do you want to die? There's like, just get out. 
<laughs> now you've spoiled everything. <clears throat> you can't do things like that. I don't know how to explain this to you, but it's not only against the law. It's wrong. It's not a nice thing to do. People won't understand. He won't understand. Abby, we shouldn't have told Mortimer. What I mean is, Melissa has developed into a very bad habit. Mortimer, I don't see why you were interfering with things that we like to do when we don't interfere with you. Hello? All right. I'll see the first stack and I'll pan the heck out of it. But look, Al, you've got to do some. You've got to do something for me. Get a hold of O'Brien, our lawyer, the head of our legal department. Have him meet me at the theater. Now, don't let me down, okay? I'm starting now. Look, I've got to go to the theater. I can't get out of it. But before I go, will you promise me something? We'd have to know what it is first. I love you very much, and I know you love me. You know I'd do anything in the world for you. And I just want you to do just this little for me. Well, what do you want us to do? Don't do anything. I mean, just don't do anything. Don't let anyone in this house and leave Mr. Hoskins right where he is. Why? I want time to think, and I've got quite a little to think about. <clears throat> You know I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Well, what on earth could happen to us? Anyway, you'll do this for me. Well... Oh, Martha, we can do that now that Mortimer is cooperating with us. Well, all right, Mortimer. <clears throat> and remember, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna let anyone in this house while I'm gone. It's a promise. Well, all right. Have you got some paper? I'll get back just as soon as I can. There's a man I've got to see. Here's some stationery. Will this do? That'll be fine. <clears throat> I can save time if I write my review on the way to the theater. <sighs> why did you go write yourself today? Well, dear, that's only natural. <laughs> I think I know why. Why? Well, the man's just become engaged to be married. I suppose that would make any man nervous. Well, their honeymoon ought to give Mortimer a real vacation. I don't think he got much rest this summer. Well, at least he can go off cutting to China or Spain. Well, I could never understand why he wanted to go to such places. Well, I think to Mortimer, the theater has always seemed pretty small potatoes. He needs something bigger. Something like the human race. Oh! That reminds me, if Mortimer, if Mortimer's going to join us later, we'll need another hymnal. There's one right in my room. You know, dear, it really is my turn to read the services, but since you weren't here and Mr. Hoskins was gone, I think I want you to read them. That's very nice of you, but uh, are you sure you want me to? It's only fair. Well then, I think I'll wear my black bomb bombazine and mother's old brooch. I'll get it. No, 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 no. We promised Mortimer we wouldn't let anyone in. Well, who do you suppose it is? I'll look. <gasps> it's two men. Um, do you recognize them? Hello? No, they're strangers to me. Well, we'll just have to pretend we're not home. This is the home of my youth. As a girl, I couldn't wait to escape from this place. And now I'm glad to escape back into it. Yeah, Josie, it's a fine hideout. The family must still live here. There's something so honestly confused about the Brewsters. I'm hungry. Look, Josie drinks. As though we were expected, a get on them. Who are you? What are you doing here? Wait, well, Abby and Martha, it's Josephine. You get out of here. I'm your niece, Josephine. You're nothing like Josephine, so don't pretend you are. You just get out of here. But I am Josephine, and this is Dr. Einstein. But she's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. Albert Einstein, Dr. Haley Einstein. Well, who are you? You just get out of here. I'm Josephine Brewster. No, you're not. I see you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring that Grandma Brewster got in England. And yet, Martha, so the broad collar to hide the scar where Grandfather's acid burnt you? Well, you boys just like Josephine's. Mm -hmm. Have you been in an accident? No, my face. Dr. Arthur is responsible for that. She's a plastic surgeon. She changes people's faces. Don't worry, ladies. The last five years, I've given Josie three new faces. I'll give her a new one right away. You see, doctor? You see what you've done to me? Even my own family. Josie, you're home in this lovely house. 
How often she tells me about Brooklyn, about her aunts that she loves so much. They know you, Josephine. You know it's Josephine. Speak to her. Tell her so. Well, Josephine, it's been a long time. What yeah, been? Josephine. What have you been doing all these years? Where have you been? Oh, England, South Africa, Australia, the last five years, Chicago. Dr. Ryan and I were in this day together. Well, we were in Chicago for the World's Fair. Mm, they got off we warm for us. Yeah, I got hot for us, too. Well, it's wonderful to be in Brooklyn again. And you, Abby, Martha, you don't look good to the older. Just as I remember you, sweet, charming, and hospitable. Oh, and dear Teddy, did she get into politics? What your sister, Doctor, was determined to become president. Oh, Teddy's fine. Just fine. And Mortimer's well, too. I know about Mortimer. I've seen his picture at the head of his column. He's evidently fulfilled all the promise of his early, nasty nature. Oh, well, we're quite fond of Mortimer. Well, Martha, we mustn't let what's on the stove boil over. Yes, if you'll excuse us. Unless you're in a hurry to go somewhere else. Well, where do we go from here? The police. The police have got a picture of that face. I've got to operate on you right away. Don't waste any worry on that rat. But we've got a hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinalzo. You can't leave a dead body in the rumble seat. You shouldn't have killed him. He's a nice fellow. He gives us a lift, and what happens? But he said I looked like Boris Carwell. That's your work, Doctor. You did that to me. Don't worry. We'll find somewhere to fix you up. Tonight? Not tonight. I'm hungry, and I'm weak. Well, Josephine, I'm very glad you came in and took the time and the trouble to come in and say hello. But we were never happy in this house, and you were never ha happy while you were in it, so we've just come in to say goodbye. Yeah, Abby, I can't say that your feeling towards me comes as a surprise. It's been a great many hours regarding the heartache I must have given you as a girl. You are quite a trial to us, Josephine. But my great disappointment is for Dr. Einstein. I promised her that no matter how rushed we were in passing through Brooklyn, I'd take the time to bring her for one of Aunt Martha's home cooked dinners. Oh. No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid there wouldn't be enough. Abby, it is a pretty good sized pot roast. Pot roast? Well, it's the least we can do. Th we'll hurry it along. Thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. We'll hurry it along. Oh, and Josephine, if you want to freshen up, you should probably use the washroom in Grandfather's laboratory. Is that still there? Oh, yes. Just as you left it. Well, we'll be in a hurry since we're all in a rush to leave. <laughs> What's Grandfather's laboratory? Just, well, just as it was, Doctor. A perfect operating room. Too bad we can't use it. After you finish with me, well, we can make a fortune here. The laboratory, the large ward, and add ten beds. And Brooklyn is crying for your talents. Why, why waste your time in Brooklyn? Doctor, you don't know this town. Basically, everybody in Brooklyn wants a new face. But so many of those old faces are locked up. A very small percentage. And the boys in Brooklyn are famous for paying generously to stay out of jail. Take it easy, Josie. Your aunts, they don't want us here. We're here for dinner, aren't we? Yeah, but after dinner? Leave it to me, Doctor. I'll handle it. Why, this house will be our headquarters for years. Oh, that would be beautiful. This nice, quiet house. Those aunts of yours. I'm already starting to love them so much. I'll go get the bags. Doctor, we must wait until we're invited. But you just said that. We'll be invited. And if they say no? Doctor, do you help us, old woman? It's like a dream come true. Only I hope you're not dreaming. It's so peaceful here. That's what makes this place so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. Chicago were amongst the busiest and happiest of my life. And from Chicago, we go to South Bend, Indiana. I'm afraid they wouldn't be interested in our experience in Indiana. Well, Josephine, you've led a pretty interesting life, I'm sure, but we really shouldn't have allowed you to talk so late. My me, Dr. Einstein in London, I might say, changed the whole course of my life. You remember I was in South Africa, the diamond business? Then the Amsterdam, the diamond market. I wanted to go back to South Africa, and Dr. Einstein made it possible for me. A good job, Josie. When we took off the bandages, the nurse had to introduce me. I love that face. I still carry the picture with me. That looks more the way you used to look, but still, I wouldn't know you. I think we'll go back to that face, Doctor. Yeah, it's safe now. Well, I know you're both in a hurry to go places, so... Aunt Martha, 
You you realize this afternoon that as a girl, I could be quite disagreeable. It wouldn't be very pleasant for any of us if... Well, well perhaps we'd better let them stay here tonight. <coughs> well, for tonight, Josephine. Very well. You take a look at my room, buddy. It just needs some airing out. I think you and Dr. Einstein will find it quite comfortable. I found it! I found it! What did you find, Teddy? The story of my life, my biography. Look, General, here's that picture I was telling you about. Me and you, at Culebra Cut. My, how I have changed. Well, you see, the picture hasn't been taken yet. We haven't even started work at Culebra, and we're still digging locks. Now, you must come with me on the inspection to Panama. No, Teddy, not to Panama. We'll go some other time. Panama's a long way off. Nonsense, it's just down in the cellar. The cellar? We let her go down there and dig locks. I beg your pardon? Who are you? I'm Woodrow Wilson. Go to bed. You look familiar. Perhaps someone I met on my hunting trip to Africa later. Yes, you look like someone I might meet in the jungle. No, Teddy. That's your sister, Josephine. She's had her face changed. So that's it. A nature faker. And perhaps it is time you go to bed, Teddy. It's getting pretty late, and Josephine and Dr. Einstein have to get back to their hotel. Bully. Just bully. Come on, General. Follow me. All right, Mr. President. We'll go to Panama. Well, bon voyage. It's down south, you know. Aunt Abby, I must correct your apprehension. You spoke of our hotel. We have no hotel. We came directly here. Well, there's a little hotel just three blocks down the... Aunt Martha, this is my home. Josephine, we do need our rooms. You need them? Yes, for our lodgers. Are there lodgers in this house? Not just now, but there will be. So my own room is still free? But Josephine, there wouldn't be any room for Dr. Einstein. He'll share the room with me. No, Josephine, I'm afraid you can't stay here tonight. Are you sure? Because, as you know, I can be quite disagreeable. Abby, let's just let them stay here. Well, for tonight. Thank you, Aunt Martha. Well, you two can go ahead and go get my room ready. I just need to out. There you go. Dr. Einstein, there's just no room. Wait, Abby. You know, Dr. Einstein didn't get things to say. But, Josephine, you can't operate here. Once we get organized, well, once we get organized with Abby. But, Josephine, you cannot turn this house into a hospital. A hospital? Heavens no. It will be a beauty parlor. Hey, Josie, down in the cellar. Dr. Einstein, but your aunt haven't invited us to live with them. You fix it? Well, just for tonight. When I go down in the cellar, what do you think I'll find? What? The Panama Canal. The Panama Canal? It fits just perfect for Mr. Spinozzo. It's a whole teddy duck, six feet long and four feet wide. Down there? Yeah. You'd think they knew we were bringing Mr. Spinozzo. I mean, it's hospitality. Rather good joke of my aunt's. They're living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. How do we get him in? Yes, we can't just walk him in through the front door. I'll bring the car around between the house and the cemetery, then when they got the bread, I'll bring Mr. Spinoza one through the window. Bed, just think we've got a bed tonight. Remember, Doctor, we're operating tomorrow. I'll fix you up beautifully. And if you don't, I'll fix you up. Josephine, your room is ready. Very well. Will you take him on with that? You guys can run on to bed. We're, bringing, we're gonna bring our luggage in. Well, Josephine, the car is okay until morning. I don't want to leave in the street. That might be against the law. Abby, what are we going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, we're not going to let them stay in this house for more than one night. We will with the neighbors stay. People coming in this house with one face and leaving with another. What are we going to do about Mr. Hoskins? <sighs> Mr. Hoskins, well, he can't be very comfortable in there. And he's been so patient, the poor dear. <laughs> well, I think Teddy had better get him down to the cellar right away. Mm-hmm. General Goethals is very pleased. He says the canal is just the right size. 
Teddy, there's been another yellow fever victim. Dear me, this will be a shock to the general. No, Teddy, we can't tell the general. It'll just spoil his visit. But it's his department. No, Teddy, we mustn't tell him. It's a secret. A state secret? Promise. You have the word of the president. Cross my heart and hope to die. Now, how are we going to keep this a secret? Well, Teddy, when I turn out the lights, when it's all dark, you come downstairs and you take the poor man down to the canal. You may announce the president will say a few words. Where is the poor devil? He's in the window seat. It seems to be spreading. We've never had a yellow fever there before. Well, run along, Teddy. <sighs> well, Abby, I've never seen Mr. Hoskins. That's right, dear. You were out. Well, you just come over and see him now. He really is very handsome, I mean, for a Methodist. <laughs> Josephine, your room's ready. You can go right up. I'm afraid we don't keep broken hours. We need to run along to bed. But we don't go to bed this early. Well, you should. It's time to come and take care of you. No, Josephine. I'll wait till you're up, then I'll turn out the light. Did you guys hear me say go to bed? Stay to us and go to the laboratory in the morning. Now then, we're all going to bed. I'll be right up. Another boy, doctor. Aunt Martha, run along. Now and Abby, turn out the light. I'll go outside and I'll open the window and then you hang him through. No, he's too heavy for me. You go outside and push. I see him her pool and together we can get him down to Panama. All right, I'll go look around. I'll bring a car between the house and the cemetery. Then we'll, then we'll bring the nozzle into the window when I tap on the glass. What are you doing over here? I came over to see Miss Abby and Miss Martha. Turn the lights, Doctor. Well, you chose rather an old timey moment for a social call. I think you'd better explain what you're doing here. I happen to live here. You don't live here. I'm over here every day, and I've never seen you before. Where are Miss Abby and Miss Martha? What have you done to them? Perhaps I'd better be better introduce ourselves. This is Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein? A surgeon of great distinction and somewhat of a magician. Well, who are you? I'm Josephine Brewster. Oh, you're Josephine? I see you've heard of me. Yes, just this afternoon, for the first time. And what did they say about me? Just that there's another sister named Josephine. That's all that was said. Well, that explains everything. Now that they know who you are, then I'll be running along. That explains everything. Just what do you mean by that? I thought I saw someone prowling around the house. You thought you saw someone prowling around the house? Yes, weren't you outside? Isn't that your car? You saw someone at the car? Yes. What else did you see? Just someone walking around the house with the car. What else did you see? Just that. that you see, I wanted to tell Miss Abby to call the police, but now that I know it's you and that that's your car, then I'll be running along. I think she's lying. I think she tells the truth. Maybe we should let her go. I think she's lying. Coming to her house at this time of night? I think she's dangerous. Get your hands off of me! Teddy, Teddy, tell this woman who I am! That's my daughter, Alice. No, she's not! Josephine, Josephine, you always 
wore a heart, but do you have to look like one? Take it easy. Now don't you two start quarreling again the second you've seen each other. There won't be any fight, Aunt Abby. <clears throat> You're not wanted here. Get out. Mortimer, me and Dr. Reinside have invited to live here. Not in this house. Well, for tonight. I don't want him anywhere near me. Well, we were invited, and it, it wouldn't be very nice for us to go back on our word, now would it? All right, but the first thing in the morning, out. All right? Where are they sleeping? We put them in Josephine's old room. That's my old room. I'm sleeping in that room. I'm here to stay. Oh, Mortimer, I'm so glad. We'll sleep down here. You bet your life you sleep down here. Josie, you'll take the couch, and I'll take the window seat. The window seat? Oh, well, let's not argue about the window seat. The window seat. You know, all this flirting really makes me think about Mr. Spinozzo. Spinozzo! Well, Mortimer, it really isn't necessary to inconvenience like this. We'll sleep down here. Josephine, your sudden consideration for me is very unconvincing. Come along, we'll go pack our stuff. Don't bother, Doctor. By the way, Doctor, I've completely lost track of Mr. Spinozzo. Who's this Mr. Spinoza? Just a friend of Josie's we've been looking for. <clears throat> well, don't bring him anywhere else in here. When we pack, I'll tell you more. Mortimer! I've almost been killed! You've almost been Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha! No, it was Josephine. She mistook her for a sneak thief. No, it was more than that. She's some kind of maniac. Mortimer, I'm afraid of her. Why, darling, you're trembling. Have you got any smelling salts? Well, why don't we remember what we wanted to celebrate? Right, I'll open a bottle of wine. I'll go help her in the kitchen. <clears throat> oh, you weren't going out somewhere, were you? Do you know what time it is? It's after 12. Oh, 12. What? Sandwiches and coffee for you both. I'll be right away. We'll sit down. Mortimer, what's going on in this house? What do you mean what's going on in this house? You were supposed to take me to dinner in the theater tonight. You called it off. You asked me to marry you. I said I would. And five minutes later, you're throwing me out of the house. Tonight, just after your sister tried to strangle me, you want to chase me, chase me home. Now, Mr. Brewster, before I go, I want to know where I stand. Do you love me? I love you very much, Elaine. In fact, I love you so much I can't marry you. Have you suddenly gone crazy? I don't think so, but it's just a matter of time. You see, insanity runs in the Brewster family. It kind of it practically gallops. That's why I can't marry you, dear. Now, you've got to do better than that. No, dear, there's a strangeness in the Brewster blood. Now, just because Teddy is a little... No, it goes way back. The first Brewster, the one who came over on the Mayflower. Mortimer, that's ancient history. Take my grandfather. He tried his patent medicines on dead people to make sure that he wouldn't kill them. He wasn't so crazy. He made a million dollars. And then there's Josephine. You said she was a maniac. She tried to kill you. Yes, but she's your sister, not you. I'm in love with you. And then there's Teddy, too. You know Teddy. He thinks he's a Roosevelt. No, dear. No Brewster should marry. I realize now that if I met my father in time, <clears throat> I would have stopped him. Now, all this doesn't explain you're crazy. Let's just look at your aunts. They're, they're Brewsters, aren't they? And the sanest, sweetest people I've ever met. Well, even they have their peculiarities. Yes, but what lovely peculiarities. Kindness, generosity, human sympathy. <sighs> There's another one. Oh, <laughs> oh Mortimer, there are plenty of others. You can't tell me anything about your aunts. I'm not going to. Look, Elaine, you've got to go home. Something very important has just come up. Up? From where? We're here alone together. I know I'm acting irrationally, but just put it down to the fact that, well, I'm a mad Brewster. Now, if you think you're going to get out of this by, by, by pretending you're insane, you're crazy. You may not want to marry me, but I'm going to marry you. I love you. Well, if you love me, will you get the heck out of here? <laughs> well, at least what? Walk me home. I'm afraid. Afraid a little walk through the cemetery? You, you critic! Elaine. And Abby, Aunt Martha, come in here. Yes, dear? What is it? Where's Elaine? 
I thought you promised me not to let anyone in this house while well, I was gone. Well, Josephine just walked in. I don't mean Josephine. Dr. Einstein is with me. I don't mean Dr. Einstein. Is that in the window seat? We told you, Mr. Hoskins. It is not Mr. Hoskins. Well, who can that be? Are you trying to tell me you've never seen this man before? Why, I certainly am. Why, this is a fine how do you do. It's getting so any man thinks he can just walk into this house. That's another, and now Aunt Abby, don't you try to get out of this. That's another one of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? That man's an imposter, and if he's come here to be buried in our cellar, he's mistaken. Oh, Aunt Abby, you admitted to me that you put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat. Yes, I did. Well, this man couldn't have just got the idea from Mr. Hoskins. And by the way, where is Mr. Hoskins? He must have gone to Panama. Oh, you buried him? No, not yet. He's just down there waiting for the services. We haven't had a minute with Josephine in the house. A strange rant, Abby. How can I believe that there are 12 men in the cellar and you admit you poisoned them? Yes, I did. You don't think it's stupid to telling a lie? Martha! <laughs> to meet you. Say, Mr. Brewster, we're in the same line of business. We are? Yeah, I'm a playwright. Oh, this being on the police force, it's just temporary. So tell me, how long have you exactly been on the force? Twelve years. I'm collecting material for a play. I'll bet it's a honey. It ought to be with all the drama I see being a cop. Mr. Brewster, you got no idea what goes on in Brooklyn. Oh, I think I have. <laughs> Say, what time have you got? Ten after one. Gee, I gotta ring in. Wait a minute, O'Hara. Um, O'Hara, I'm a play of yours. I may be able to help you. You would? 
Oh, say it was fate. My walking in here tonight. Look, I'll tell you the plot. Oh, you're on. Oh, you're on your way, eh? Good, you haven't got much time, you know. Well, everything's just about ready. Oh, you're leaving, Josephine? Goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Einstein. Yes, Josephine, you can't go without all your things. Well, here, it was nice meeting you. I'll see you again, and we'll talk about your plot. Oh, I'm not leaving now, Mr. Brewster. Why not? Because you just offered to help me with my play. You and me are going to write my play together. I can't do that, oh, here. I'm not a creative writer. How did the creating? You just put the words to it. But O'Hara... No, sir, Mr. Brewster. I ain't leaving this house till I tell you the plot. And that gives murmur. I'll be running along. Don't try that. You can't go yet. You've got to take everything with you. You know what I'm saying. Look, O'Hara, you're in a long home, eh? My uh, sister's just going. I can wait. I've been waiting 12 years. <sighs> Sorry I took so long. Don't bring that in here, O'Hara. Would you join us for a bite in the kitchen? The kitchen? Josephine's leaving. Oh, that's nice. Come on, Officer O'Hara. Officer O'Hara, are you sure you don't mind eating in the kitchen? And where else would you eat? Well, it was nice to have seen you again, Josephine. I'm glad you came back to Brooklyn, Josephine, because it gives me a good chance to throw you out. And the first one out is your boyfriend, Mr. Spinalzo. Look, Mr. Brewster, we can talk in here. Coming right out. I might have known you grew up there to play with the policeman. Oh, get going now, all three of you. Doctor, this affair with my brother and I has got to get settled. Now, Josie, your brother gives us a chance to get away. What more could you ask for? You don't understand. This goes back a good many years. Now, Josie, let's get going. No, Doctor. We're going to sleep right here tonight. With a cop in the kitchen and Mr. Spinalzo in the window seat? That's all he's got on us. We'll take Mr. Spinalzo and we'll dump him down in the bay. Then we'll come right back here. And if he tries to interfere... Now, Josie. Doctor, you know when I make up my mind. Yeah, when you make up your mind, you lose your head. Brooklyn is not a good place for you. Doctor. I'm sorry. Close to Just a minute. The old ladies are just as good as you. 
Oh, they are, are they? That's easily taken care of. All I need is one more. That's it. Just one more. Well, here I am. <laughs> good Methodist with a foreigner? I will not have our cellar desecrated. Well, where do you suppose Mortimer is? I don't know, but he must be doing something because he told Josephine, just wait, I'll settle this. Well, he can't very well settle something while he's out of the house. I mean, that's all we wanted settled. What's happening down there? All right, now we're steady. Mortimer, where have you been? I've been over to Dr. Gilchrist. I've got his signature on De Teddy's commitment papers. Mortimer, what's the matter with you? Running around getting papers signed at a time like this? Do you know what Josephine is doing? She's putting Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Spinozzo in together. Oh, she is. Is she? Well, let her. Is Teddy in her room? Teddy won't be of any help. When she signs these commitment papers, I can tackle Josephine. What have they got to do with it? You had to go and tell Josephine about those 12 graves. If I can make Teddy responsible for those, I can protect you, don't you see? No, I don't see. And we pay taxes to have the police protect us. <laughs> I'll be back down in a minute. Come, Martha, we're going for the police. Okay, all right. But the police, you can't go for the police. And why can't we? Uh, because if you tell the police about Mr. Spinoza, they'd find Mr. Hoskins, too, and that might make them curious. And they'd find about, out about the other 12 gentlemen. Oh, I'm not sure they'd bother. They'd have to make out a very long report, and it's one thing a policeman hates to do, it's right. You can't depend on that, it might leak out, and you couldn't expect the judge or jury to understand. Oh, Judge Fullenwood. We know him very well. Well... He's coming here to tea. He's coming here to tea someday. Oh yes. Uh, we must talk to him about that. Mm -hmm. His wife died, died a few years, years ago, and it left him very lonely. Well, come, Martha. No, you can't do this. I won't let you. You can't leave this house, and you can't have Judge Coleman to tea. Why not? I'm, I am going to do something. We may have to call the police in later, but if we do, I want to be ready for him. Well, Mortimer, if they're not out of this house by morning, we're going for the police. Will you please let me do this my own way? And I've got to see Teddy. She's in her room. They'll be out. I promise you that. Go to bed, William. Well, that's really me, isn't it? Yes, I think if Mortimer is going to do what he says he's going to do, then that just means that Josephine's going through a lot of unnecessary trouble. We should probably tell her. Josephine, you better stop what you're doing, so it'll just have to be undone. It's all done. Is that your Mortimer? Well, then it'll just have to be undone. Mortimer said that you two will be out of this house by morning. Oh, you did? Well, you two can run off to bed then. Well, Josephine, when you're out of this house, by the time we're up, then you'll see Mortimer. Oh, yes, I'll see Mortimer. Well, goodbye, Josephine. Good night, aunties. No, it's not a good night, Josephine. Goodbye, Josephine. <laughs> Phew, that's all fixed up. 48 hours later, no sleep. Can we get to bed now? Doctor, you're forgetting. What? My brother Mortimer? We'll do that tomorrow or the next day. No, doctor. Tonight, now. But I've got to operate tomorrow. Yes, you're operating tomorrow. But tonight we take care of Mortimer. But tonight we go to bed. Doctor, look at me. You can tell it's going to be done, can't you? I know that look. It's a little late for us, for us to dissolve our partnership. Well, where do we go? I don't know, Doctor. But tonight we take care of Mortimer. Okay. Come on, Doctor. Tonight, now. Where are the instruments? I won't tell you. I'll find them, Doctor. Oh, yes. You can sell them. Where? I'm not telling you. I'll find them myself. Uh, you get out of here. 
No, Doctor, I'm waiting for something important. Please, I'm warning you, go. Dr. Einstein, I have nothing against you personally. You seem to be a nice fellow. Take my advice and get out of this house and get just, far, just as far away as possible. You get away. All right, don't say I didn't warn you. I'm warning you, please go. Things are gonna start popping around here any minute. Josie's in a bad mood, and when she's in a bad mood, bad things happen, terrible things. Well, oh, you think so, do you? What, what do those plays teach you about? Um, uh, about what? About sense. That's more than you've got. Oh, you think so, do you? You think people in plays act intelligently? I wish you had to sit through some of the ones I have to sit through. Take the little opus I saw, for instance. In this play, there's a man. He's, suppo he's supposed to be brave. He knows he's in a house with murderers. He ought to know he's in danger. He's even been warned to get out of the house. But does he go? No, he stays there. Now I ask you, doctor, is that what an intelligent person would do? You're asking me? He didn't even have sense enough to be frightened, to be on guard. For instance, the murderer invites him to sit down. Well, why don't you sit down? Yeah. Believe it or not, that one, was, that one was in there too. And what did he do? He sat down. Now mind you, this fellow's supposed to be bright. There he sits, just waiting to be trussed up. And what do you think they use the time with? What? The curtain cord. And what did he say? <clears throat> now, now, it was pretty convenient. When are playwrights going to use some imagination? The curtain cord. How very convenient. <clears throat> yeah, but to so see him there with his back to him, that's the kind of stuff we have to sit through night after night. And they say the critics are killing the theater. It's the playwrights who are killing the theater. So there he sits in the big goat. This fellow who's supposed to be bright, remember that, just waiting to be trussed up and gagged. You're right about that. He wasn't very bright. <laughs> Matt Warmer, <clears throat> if you don't mind, we'll finish the rest of the story. Josie, for me, the quick way. Doctor, this must really be an artistic achievement. Josie, after all, we're performing from a very distinguished critic. All right, let's get it over with. <clears throat> all ready for you, Doctor? Well, what are we going to do? Well, we have to do it. Doctor, <clears throat> perhaps we do do it fast. Well? All right, Doctor? All right. Josie? Hey, the Colonel's got to stop blowing that bugle. All right, officer, we're taking the bugle away from her. We promised the neighbor she wouldn't do that anymore. Yes, officer, we know. Good night. I'll speak to her myself. Where are the lights? Hey, you stood me up. I waited an hour for you at Kelly's. What happened to him? <laughs> she was just explaining the fellow as she saw in the play. Did they, did they have that in the play you saw tonight? Gee, they practically stole that from the second act of my play. Why, in the second act of my play, right before the... I better start at the beginning. It, it opens in my mother's dressing room, where I was born, only I ain't born yet. Tied up in a chair, just like you are. The place is an inferno of flames. It's on fire. Then all of a sudden, through the window, in comes Mayor LaGuardia. I'm listening, aren't I? Hey, remember who paid for that? Go easy on it. I'm listening, aren't I? How do you like it so far? Well, it put Josie to sleep. Leave her alone. If she don't, oh, ain't got no more interest than that, she don't get a drink. All right, it's three days later. I've been transferred. I'm under charges. That's because somebody stole my badge. 
All right, I'm walking my beat on Staten Island, 46 precinct, when a guy I'm following is really following me. Don't let anybody in. It's Tops. Josie, it's Tops. So I figure I'll outsmart him. There's a vacant house on the corner. I go in. In. I stand there in the dark. The door handle turns. I pull my guns, braces myself against the wall, and says, come in. What is going on in here? Hey, Pat, what do you know? This is Mortimer Brewster. He's going to help me with my play. I'm just telling him the story. You have to tie him up to make him listen. <laughs> the colonel blew the bugle again in the middle of the night. Did they send you here for me? We didn't know you were here. The lieutenant's on the warpath. He says the colonel's got to be put someplace. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I better get away, Mr. Brewster, so I'll just run through the third act quickly. No, don't do that. Get away from me. Say, do you know what time it is? It's after 8 o'clock in the morning. It is? Gee, Mr. Brewster, those first two acts run a little long, but I don't see anything we can leave out. Oh, you can leave it all out. <laughs> who is this guy? Oh, that's my sister. Oh, the one who ran away. So she came back. Yeah, she came back. This is Brophy. Get me Mac. Hello, Mac? Tell the lieutenant he can call up the big man. We got him. And the Brewster house. Do you want us to hold her... You want us to bring her in? Oh, all right, we'll hold her right here. The lieutenant's on the way over. So I've been turned today? All right, you've got me. And I suppose you and that stool pigeon brother of mine will spend the reward? Reward? Now I'll do some turning in. You think those, those awesome and sweet, charming old ladies? With our 13 bodies buried Teddy, in the Teddy, Teddy, Teddy! What are you talking about? 13 bodies, I'll show you where they're at. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You better be careful what you say about your aunt. They happen to be friends of ours. You don't want to see what's down in the cellar? Go on down to the cellar with her, Alice. I'm not so sure I want to be down in the cellar with her. Hey, <laughs> Dad, get her off of me! Here, what do you think you're doing? Well, what do you know about that? Come in. What are you doing here? I told you I was going to handle this. Well, ma'am, we were just about to... What happened? Did she put up a fight? Oh, this ain't the girl who blows the bugle. This is her sister. She tried to kill Klein. Turn her over. We, uh, kind of think she's wanted somewhere. Oh, you kind of think she's wanted somewhere? If you guys don't look at the circulars we hang up in the station, at least you could read True Detective. Certainly she's wanted. In Indiana, escape from prison for the criminal insane. She's a lifer. Was there a reward mentioned? Yeah, and I'm claiming it. She was trying to get us down to the cellar. She said there was 13 bodies buried down there. 13 bodies in the cellar. And that didn't tip you off? She came out of a nut house? I thought all along she talked kind of crazy. Oh, it's Shakespeare. Where have you been all night? You need not bother to tell me. I've been right here, ma'am, writing a play with Mortimer Brewster. Oh, yeah? Well, you're going to have plenty of time to write that play. You're suspended. Now get back and record in. Hey, sometime, can I come over to the station and use the typewriter over there? No, get out of here. Take that girl somewhere else and bring her to. See what you can find out about her accomplice. The girl that helped her escape. She's wanted too. No wonder Brooklyn's in the shape it's in. With the police force full of flatheads like you, falling for that kind of a story. 13 bodies in the cellar. But there are 13 bodies in the cellar. Who are you? I'm President Roosevelt. What is this? <laughs> this is the fellow who blows you. Good morning, Colonel. Well, Colonel, you've blown your last bugle. Dear me, another yellow fever victim? What? All the bodies in the cellar are yellow fever victims. Oh, this is a spy we caught in the White House. Will you get that girl out of here? If there's any questioning of spies, that's my department. You keep out of this. You're forgetting. As President of the United States, I'm also head of the Secret Service. Captain, I'm Mortimer Brewster. Are you sure? Um, I'd like to talk to you about my sister, Teddy, the one who blew the bugle. 
Mr. Brewster, we ain't gonna talk about that now. She's got to be put away. I quite agree with you. In fact, it's all arranged for. I had I had these commitment papers signed by Dr. Gilchrist, our family physician. Teddy has signed them himself, you see? And I've signed them, signed them as next of kin. Where's she going? Happy to. All right, I don't care where she goes as long as she goes. Oh, she's going all right. But I want you to know that everything that's happening around here, Teddy's responsible for. Now those 13 bodies in the cellar. Yeah, yeah, those 13 bodies in the cellar. It ain't enough that the neighbors are all afraid of her, with her disturbing peace with that bugle. But can you imagine if that cockeyed story of the 13 bodies got around? And now she's starting a yellow fever scare. Cute, ain't it? 13 bodies, do you think anybody would believe that story? Well, you can't tell. Some people are just dumb enough. You really don't know what to think. About a year ago, a man starts up a murder rumor in Greenpoint. And I had to dig up half an acre lot just to prove that. Oh, well, excuse me. Good morning, Mortimer. Um, good morning, dear. This is Miss Witherspoon. She's come to meet Teddy. To meet Teddy? Miss Witherspoon is the superintendent of Happy Dale. Oh, come right in. This is Captain. Lieutenant Rooney. I'm glad you're here, Super, because you're taking her with you today. Today? I didn't know that. Not today. Look, Lane, I've got a lot of business to attend to, you, so you run along home and I'll call you up. Nuts! I had no idea it was this immediate. The papers are all signed. She goes today. Complete insubordination. When the president is treated like this, what is this country coming to? There's your woman, Super. Just a minute. Mr. President, I have very good news for you. Your term of office is over. Is it March the 4th? Practically. Is she trying to move into the White House before I've moved out? Who, Teddy? Taft. This isn't Mr. Taft, Teddy. This is Mr. Wither Mrs. Witherspoon. She used to be your guide in Africa. Bully. Just bully. I must get my equipment. Oh, we have visitors? <clears throat> this is Lieutenant Rooney. Hi. How do you do, Lieutenant? You don't look anything like the fuzz punch that the police would say you are. How do you do, Miss Witherspoon? You've come to meet Teddy? She's come to take her. Aunties, the police want Teddy to go there today. Oh, no! Not in real life! I'm sorry, ladies, but it has to be done. The papers are all signed and she's going along with the superintendent. We won't permit it. We promise to take the bugle away from her. We won't be separated from Teddy! I'm sorry, ladies, but the law is the law. She's committed herself and she's going. I must be on my way to Africa. Goodbye, Aunt Abby. Goodbye, Aunt Martha. Well, if she's going, we're going too. Yes. Well, that's sweet of them to want to, but it's impossible. You see, you can't take sane people at Happy Dale. Now let's be sensible about this, ladies. For instance, here I am wasting my morning when I have serious work to do. You know there are still murders to be solved in Brooklyn. Yes, oh, are there? It ain't only her bugle blowing and the neighbors all afraid of her, but things could just get worse. Sooner or later, we'd be put in the trouble of digging up your cellar. Our cellar? Yeah, your niece has been telling around that there are 13 bodies buried in your cellar. But there are 13 bodies in our cellar. <laughs> well, what? if that's why you want to take Teddy, then we can just go down and show you. Come on, Miss Witherspoon. We'll take you down to the cellar and we'll show you the grapes. We put flowers on them every Sunday. Flowers? Yes, the grapes are all marked too. I don't think the superintendent wants to go down in the cellar. And the lieutenant was telling me that only last year she had to dig up half an acre lot, weren't you, lieutenant? That's right. No, but you wouldn't have to dig them up. The grapes are all marked. And we put flowers on them every Sunday. Don't you think you can find room for these ladies? Well, I... Miss Witherspoon, if you guys live there with Teddy, you will find it that it is in our will. And for a very generous amount. Well, the Lord knows we could use the money, but I'm afraid. And, as I said, I'm a very busy woman. Well, Miss Witherspoon, you just come downstairs and we'll show you the graves. There's one Mr. Spinoza who does not belong, who will have to leave. But the rest are all our gentlemen. Maybe see the papers? Oh, 
we'll just sign here. consider everyone at Happy Dale your family? That must make it very lonely, though. It does, but my duty is my duty. Well, oh. Mr. Biscuit, would you like a glass of our wine? It's elderberry. We make it ourselves. Elderberry wine? <sighs> Why, yes, of course, at Happy Dale, our relationship will be more formal, but... Here it is. No. There it is. <laughs> 